welcome to the show. Now, listen, all of my guests tonight were at the front of the queue when it came to handing out talent. Um, in a moment, I'll be talking to the versatile actress who brought a vivid splash of colour to the phrase Scarlet Woman. She is Michelle Collins. <laughs> then there's the comedian who made his biggest impression impersonating just a legion of celebrities before establishing himself as an actor in his own right. He is Alistair McGowan. <laughs> Oh, and I'm going to be talking to the first lady of British soul who just electrified our screens in just the two of us. She's going to be performing live for us. She is Beverly Knight. <laughs> and then there's the brilliant comedian who can claim to be the only belly dancing stand-up in existence. He is Ahmed Jalili. <laughs> and not only that, there's just going to be amazing music in the form of a new version of a modern classic performed by Cindy Lauper. <laughs> OK, but first up, the woman who broke all the rules when she left behind her soap origins to become one of the most in-demand actresses around. Now, she's best known for her role in EastEnders, where she put the sin into Cindy Beale, you know, the tart without a heart who asked a hitman to bump off her husband. Nice. <laughs> Having said that, though, it was Ian Beale, which could kind of qualify as a mercy killing, really, couldn't it? <laughs> um, she's about to star in The Family Man, a new drama series about the agonies and ecstasies of IVF treatment. Oh, she isn't half good. Girl could become quite attached to a bloke like you. I'm still Cindy Beale. People don't like to actually see you move on. Oh, I miss it. I was very, very shy as a child. Do you know how much money we spent trying to have a baby? Mrs. Kaufman. Painfully shy. I mean, I still am. Will you marry me? I'm still very ambitious. You're Joe. I know, but I used to be George. I appreciate what I've got now. Who's buying? I will. If people put out. We'll go Dutch. The good thing about this business is you're never quite sure what's what's around the corner. It's Michelle Collins! Hello. Where are you? You got a couple of wolf whistles there. Did I? Okay, I'm but... liking that. You know what? I love the way that you continually sort of surprise us all. Because I was reading your notes and I was thinking, OK, let's see what Michelle Collins is all about. And then I saw a musical. Mm. You're going to be in a musical? Um, I am going to be in a musical, yes. And um, it's called Daddy Cool. And it's um, in the West End at the Shaftesbury Theatre. And it's um, Boney M music. Now, just for anybody that doesn't remember Boney M, look, here's, here's a bit of them. <laughs> Well, that's brilliant, because I'm playing Mar Baker. The thing is, I never really... I'm probably a bit older than you. I wasn't really ever into Boney M, though. They weren't particularly very cool, were they? Do you so, remember? So why the musical, then? Uh, well, because um, I thought um, I'd have a go at doing a musical, and the storyline is a bit um, like a West Side Story, um, Romeo and Juliet type of thing, about um, urban gangs, posing urban gangs. And um, so I thought, why not give it a go? Because, of course, singing is something that you've done before. Um, I, I, yeah, yes, I, I sang in a band a long, 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 long time ago when I was about I 18. That. Do you? Yeah. They were called Mary Wilson and the Will Stations. We've actually got a little clip. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's have a look. I didn't know they had TV in those days. It was so long ago. <laughs> My God. But fantastic for an 18-year-old to be in a band and going on tour. Was it, was it, it was. as much fun as you think? It's... It was great fun. I think we got, um, I got £30 a week and we spent most of our time in a transit van with nine blokes and Not three bad. girls. <laughs> Not bad. Um, it, it was great fun. At the end of it, I know that um, you had quite a tough time when it all came to an end. Mm. What, what happened? The band sort of came to... Um, 
a sort of unexpected end, I suppose. You know, we were all told we sort of called to this pub and um, we were told that basically um, Mary was going solo and uh, we weren't needed anymore. And um, so I was 19 at that time and I taught this really, really um, to heart, actually. And, um, and I became anorexic afterwards for, for, for quite a, a while. How long for? So. Um, I'd say, I mean, the thing about anorexia is, is it's not anything that ever really totally goes away because it's, a re it, it, it's, it's up here. But I'd say physically, I suppose it took me about two years to really get back to, to a normal weight. Um, but, you know, I got through it. I had a, you know, my mum was really good. I had a good family and I didn't actually have to go to counselling, thank God. But I was probably about five and a half, six at my, at my lowest. Stone. Mm. To be honest with you, it was the best thing that happened to me because I always wanted to be an actress anyway. And I sort of got involved in the band as, as pure fluke. So um, I basically um, tried to be an actress, which is what, you know, I said I really want to do and, and um, got into an actor's co-op and, and started like that. I met Tim Roth, actually, and he really helped me um, in my early career. Obviously, you got this amazing part in EastEnders, and it was originally actually for only how many episodes? Eleven episodes, yes. And how long were you actually there for? Uh, ten years, something ten, like that. Uh, eleven yeah. episodes, <laughs> ten years. Quite a long time. We yes, couldn't get yes. enough of her. She's yes. fantastic. Yes. Did you enjoy playing her? Yeah, no. I mean, out of all the characters in the soap, she'd have to be the one that I'd really wanted to play. I mean, you know, I know people love to hate her, but you know, and she said things that we all thought but would never have the guts to say and and, and do and. Oh, I love playing her. Can I just remind myself of just how evil schmeevil she was? Mm. OK, let's have a look. Maybe we can, we can get closer in time, you know. I, I want to. Look, Cindy, we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. Well, maybe if we didn't live together. You do a very good job of living on your own before. Yeah, I know, but when I start to feel trapped... Look, I just... I, just, I just don't think I can plan that far ahead. Not yet. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to push you here. What's changed your mind? What do you mean? You seem different, that's all. Did something happen today? No. Oh, yeah, watch out. <laughs> the original Desperate Housewife. Okay. Cindy got a lot of the doof, 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 she did. doof, 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 now, Cindy was a sort of super cow, as we know, but sh she also had... Misunderstood. A, well, exactly, because actually... She was a good the, mother. Which actually brings me on to your new programme, The Family Man, which is based around these four different couples, mm. where you are playing a woman who's desperately trying to have a baby. Mm. Um, well, it's, it, it really stars um, Trevor Eve, and he plays um, an IVF doctor who thinks he's God and... Megalomaniac, and, yeah. And he can give everyone... Um, a baby, he wants one. But it's a real sort of thought-provoking contemporary drama about things that we can all relate to about fertility and, um, and about, you know, women of a certain age who feel they can have everything in life. You know, and I play this woman, Gillian, who's sort of 40, who's, you know, got her own business, um, has got a husband, um, basically got everything she wants apart from a child. So she basically goes on the internet, which is illegal, Anyway, so don't try this at home. <laughs> and um, she um, finds a, a, um, a donor. And if you go on the internet, you can find these people who are willing to sell their eggs. And she meets this young girl who sort of fits her criteria. You know, she's young, she's attractive, she's very bright. And um, she offers her £5,000 to sell her eggs. And, and that's what happens. And um, it, it's, it's the real sinister side of IVF, actually. And it's... Um, it's quite twisty-turny as well, yeah, isn't it? It's, it's, not, it's not got endings that you'd expect. No, and, and things it's... Happen. Um, Can we, just before we go on, I just want to have, have a quick look. OK. You're a man and you're 33. It's easy for you to say. Oh, I'm sorry. I've waited 41 years to find you. No-one else has ever been good enough. Too choosy for your own good. <laughs> Good on my own eggs anyway. What is it with me? I've got you, I've got my own business. I can't even get away of going into Top Shop. Why, why can't I be happy? Why do I have to round it all off with being mummy? It is it is a biological need, mm. I think, in a woman. And once that 
need gets triggered, then you go to any lengths oh, yeah. and if to you have fulfill that who, need. Who, like, you know, the character he's playing is saying, well, you know, no, we can, we can do this. And, and you know, it's, technology is great, but it's like, you know, how far can we go? Mm. We've come a long way since test tube babies. Mm. I mean, obviously, there are positive sides of it mm. as well, but, but this... This drama probably isn't so much the positive side, but, but it's, um, it is fantastic. If you want something that's very thought-provoking and very honest... This is it. Um, yeah, then um, I suggest you watch it. OK, so you've done lots of dramas and you've been very successful since you've left EastEnders. And I was just wondering, would you ever be tempted back into another soap? I mean, obviously, you can't go back to EastEnders because you're dead. Um, which is kind of final. Doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't really doesn't matter, actually, does it? <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you were to go back, would you? And I'd go into Corrie. I'd like to be in Coronation Street. Oh, I'd well, like to be in Coronation Street. Oh, you can do I it. I just think it's a bit. I just quite like it. It's sort of camp, isn't it? And and Jonathan Harvey, who's now involved in it all, and I think he's brilliant. He wrote Gimme Gimme and stuff, and I just think he's just made it so fantastic. I've got a test for you. What? I was hoping you might say Corey. Right. What we're going to do is, in your best northern accent, what we want you to do is some typical Coronation Street sayings. Are you preparing yourself? Is that a little <laughs> preparation? <laughs> Hang on, I'm just going to be... Right. A up. I've just clocked Norris on Rosamond Street wearing nothing but his undercrackers. If you want to read it, that one. A up. I've just clocked Norris on Rosamond Street wearing nothing but his undercrackers. How's Are you that? putty, Ken Barlow? Are you using stockings to make you look like a right daft Aperth? <laughs> Was that Aperth? Aperth? Is it Aperth? No, it's Aperth. Is it Aperth? Aperth. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Michelle Collins! Thank you. Time for some music. Now, my next guest's... When Entertainment Today found out that...